You're listening to the Great Canadian Aftermarket Podcast, brought to you by the publishers of Indie Garage and Jobber Nation. Connect with us online at indiegarage.ca and jobbernation.ca, a brand of chat integrated media. Hello. Most shops uh, have uh, some manner of technology platform that they use to run their shops, to schedule uh, appointments, to uh, reach out to customers when occasion, and certainly to track the service that they've done. And there's lots of opportunities uh, for uh, reaching out to customers with those technologies, but many shops find that that always falls from the top of the priority list, uh, and, and they just don't seem to get an opportunity to really fully explore the CRM systems that they have at hand. Now, I'm joined today by Robert Whitehurst from Epicor Mechanic Net. Now, uh, Mechanic Net is has one of the largest installed uh, bases of CRM systems and management systems in the aftermarket. Uh, but we wanted to talk in general about uh, uh, the technology that you have uh, in your office at, at the shop level, how you can use it, uh, areas that may have been neglected at times. Uh, uh, good day, Robert. Uh, glad you could join us today. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Now, uh, I made a couple of kind of strident statements uh, right there about what shops can and can't do and do and are and aren't doing. Um, is it accurate? Do they have a lot of technology that they're not actually employing to the fullest? Yeah, most shop management systems, I say probably all of them at this point, have some level or capability of customer follow-up built into them, right? And so it's just uh, taking the time to figure out, you know, how to set that up and then, you know, implement it, right? Um, the trouble is not, you know, not everybody has the time or or is willing to or or thinks about taking the time to, to set all that stuff up. Right. Now, I, 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 like, I, I know that, you know, sometimes the interfaces are, are a bit different. And certainly, you know, when we're dealing with shop owners, most have a technical background uh, and, and, you know, certainly don't shy away from, from uh, technology when it comes to repair technologies. Uh, yeah. But even I find sometimes interfaces, uh, not knowing where to look, you get kind of a little bit frustrated and then the customer is calling or a tech wants to talk to you and, and it just it immediately it's 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 gone from that priority list, uh, but in this world we're in now, where uh, increasingly we've moved to non-contact uh, transactions, you don't get to see your customers in your shop anymore, or not often anyway. Uh, you don't uh, have as many opportunities to to pass along that word of mouth. Uh, it while there's certainly no absolute replacement for face-to-face -face contact. Uh, when you're not allowed that, being able to reach out to your customers is is kind of the next best thing, and maybe you know the only option. Uh, this should raise its importance uh, for for shops, should it not? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's never been a better time to to take the proper amount of time to get in front of your customers and engage with them. Now, what what are the what are the benefits? I mean, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I think we can all kind of imagine that on where there's a follow up, something's automated, but but really, how does how does that work? And 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 what are the do you have any insights into kind of the effectiveness of, of using some of those tools that, that might help shops say, hey, you know what, I really should spend the time uh, in an evening or a few weekends to to really set some things up, do it one time, and have it start to run for me. Yeah. Um... You know, MechanicNet's been out there for a very long time. I've personally been, uh, you know, in, in, you know, doing customer follow-up in the industry now for 15 years. And it doesn't take much, you know. It's kind of like, uh, you know, you get in front of your, like you get a reminder from your dentist when you do through teeth fitting. You know, if I wasn't getting that, I wouldn't go twice a year, right? <laughs> right. I'd go probably right. about every three years with a toothache, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like I'm super happy when I get that reminder from my dentist, but I know it's important I do. And there's a, a certain percentage of a shop's customers that will appreciate just getting a heads up, hey, you're due for X, Y, Z, right? So it can, you know, what we notice um, when we look at the data is, you know, you have a large percentage of people at most shops that are visiting that shop once or twice a year. Um, the goal is let's get those, let's get that person just one more time annually. Right. Also, because we're focusing on, you know, reminding people that they're due for uh, these services, like, you know, 
uh, OEM factory services, those tend to be very profitable, you know, uh, gravy jobs for most shops. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the things that, that we've noticed uh, through, uh, uh, you know, various levels of economic shutdown through the pandemic, of course, people aren't driving their cars as often. Uh, most uh, drivers, uh, unless their car reminds them, which certainly does happen, they're still kind of hooked into the, hey, you know, uh, X number of kilometers or miles between oil changes, uh, you know, it's sort of mileage based thinking. Uh, now, even, you know, my vehicle, uh, it's, you know, X number of kilometers or one year or, yeah. you know, six months for this certain service. So, it, you know, e the vehicles themselves have transitioned to uh, a time-based limit at some level. Uh, and, and yet I'm still seeing even, uh, you know, a number of reach outs I get from uh, service providers I've used in the past from, you know, in, in, in cities and towns I don't live in anymore. Uh you know, hey, we estimate your mileage should be, you should come in. And so there's still a little bit of, of that going on. Um, you know, so there's a need to reach out, uh, even when people aren't, uh, you know, driving their vehicles to, with some messaging, correct? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, uh, you can base uh, reminders upon, um, you know, mileage or uh, time frames, uh, And that's usually what the recommendation is from the manufacturers, right? So absolutely. Um, another thing that is almost counterintuitive that a lot of um, the shops, you know, uh, watching or listening might uh, be experiencing is, um, you know, there's a lot of shops I talk to on a daily basis that they're noticing a lot of people are driving a lot more now, <laughs> which is weird, okay. right? You was so counterintuitive. Um, but, and I, I don't know exactly the reason, but, uh, just through my conversations, I think it may have something to do with the fact that, you know, nobody's really willing to take an airplane at this point. Right? Okay. Okay. You know, so everyone's, you know, if you're, if you're going to go, uh, out, you know, if you're going to be driving, you want to make sure your car's safe and you're not going to break down. Right. So if I'm going to take a road trip, <laughs> which more and more people are doing right now, I'm going to take yeah. it in. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Sure. You know, uh, uh, road trips are, are, you know, what people are going to be doing with their holidays and vacations uh, for the uh, for to a larger extent than normal. One of the aspects we also learned, and I did mention this in the last podcast, uh, you know, on the average mileage is with all of the delivery going on, you have a lot of sort of casual owner operator delivery vehicles out there. And they have certainly been running at, at top speed, whether it's, you know, the Uber Eats type uh, thing, you know, we have a number of obviously services that are, you know, uh, uh, basically gig economy uh, fleet drivers, and, right. and uh, they are doing a lot more of that, that that Uber driver that might have done an evening a week, to get a little extra cash, that's now their main source of income, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so they are at it every day and really putting the miles on and, and they need to be uh, reminded that, uh, uh, you know, their their uh, their service pattern has to change too, or they're going to find themselves in a, in a situation where they, they, you know, their, their earnings are going to be obviously negatively impacted. These are, uh, you know, these are all kind of various strange dynamics that the, that we're seeing out there. Now, when we were talking uh, before uh, we we started this session, uh, you mentioned that that uh, shops should should uh, spend some time focusing on their uh, their Google reviews. Yeah. And and uh, what's involved there, and, and what are the what what are the benefits? What's what's some feedback you're getting on uh, getting on top of that? Well, um, you know the the reality is uh, Google is the eight thousand pound grill in the room. You know, um, it, we're getting to the point to where it just can't be ignored anymore. And there's certain shops that are recognizing that, right? Well, those shops, you know, as a consumer, if I'm looking to take my car to a shop, you know, I'll go to Google, I type, you know, auto repair, the geolocation of my phone kicks in, and it's going to find, you know, the shops that are closest to me, right? Well, I don't, they all look the same to me. I don't know which place I should call, right? Well, one sort of discerning uh, differentiating factor that um, that uh, you could have yourself stand out is is the amount of reviews that you have, right? Okay. If, if there's a shop that has, uh, you know, 10 reviews and, and the shop that's a block and a half away has, you know, 110 reviews, um, the guy with the 110 reviews is probably the guy I'm going to end up calling at least first, 
right? Uh, unless that guy, when I call him, starts cussing at me, that's right. probably going to be the place I end up doing business, right? So, right. yeah, excellent. Now, how hard how hard is it to get to? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, the term I'm trying to think of the term schema comes to mind. Getting your your shops listed um, is that something that that uh, uh, you know platforms can can uh, assist in? Uh, you know, to kind of streamline. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's not that difficult at all in this day and age. You know, Google wants you to be on Google, right? That's right. in their best interest, right? So um, I believe, you know, you have to sort of prove that you are the owner, meaning uh, they have different ways to do that. They'll call you, they'll have like a robocall, call the shop, or they'll send you a postcard in the mail to that physical address. Um, uh, but yeah, you definitely want, if you're not, you want to make sure that you have a Google business page Number one, you want to make sure also that you're in control of that Google business page, right? That, that you're actually listed on there as the owner. So you're being notified if you get a review and that way you can go in and you can respond to it, if, especially if it's a negative, right? That's one thing I noticed too. Um, you know, people just leave, you know, shops will leave a negative hanging out there, right? Right. <laughs> you, right. at the very least, you want to respond to that, you know, as quickly as possible. And you want to say something to the effect of, you know, um, I'm so sorry that happened. Um, you know, we're, I'm calling you right now. We want to make things right. And because no one expects you to be perfect, um, you know, a shop to be perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, but they want to know that if you drop the ball, you're going to pick it, pick it up and run with it. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Certainly. I think most of us by now have had an experience, uh, you know, somewhere in our lives where, if you have really wanted a response from a business or an organization because of something that has gone uh, sideways, uh, if you reach out, when you reach out through social media, that's when you get a rapid response. You know, a phone call or an email, uh, you know, will sit in somebody's inbox or voicemail forever. But then all of a sudden you somebody posts something on Facebook or on Twitter about it and immediately you're getting a response. <laughs> you know, clearly this is this is the 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 world we live in. Right. Uh, it is. And, and shops <laughs> who are, you know, customer facing businesses. I mean, they're not discrete business to business. But it's a consumer facing business. Uh, I guess need to recognize that. And there are tools to help them manage that uh, uh, effectively and, and quickly. Um, is there a, a sense that you have uh, of a, a kind of a break point between, you know, how are shops that are employing, you know, uh, you know, effective, effective uh uh, uh, Google related activities yeah. uh, versus those that aren't. I mean, it, you know, folks uh, out there in the, in the shop community, I mean, for years and years, you just spent lots of, frankly, a, a big significant number of dollars on your yellow page ads, right? Yeah. That's what you did. That was your advertising yeah. aside from word of mouth. That was your advertising. Now I, I haven't seen a white pages or yellow pages in, in at least a decade. No. Uh you know, and and uh, even for a good time before that, they went straight into the recycling. You know, uh, yeah. these big books, right? So, uh, so Google is today's yellow pages, uh, not to mix uh, copyrights, uh, and and uh, you know uh, justifies some attention uh, and, and probably some investment in, at some level in it. Um, is it paying off? I guess is my question. Uh as far as is it is it generating people you know, yeah to get, i mean have problem? you been able to see the difference in in you know just your conversations discussions and your experience with 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 shops that that uh, those shops that really embrace it and make sure that their stuff is in place are responsive uh get get their uh you know proper google pages up properly are, are responsive to positive and negative reviews uh you know what do you hear shops that focus on it they're going to notice people you know most shops, when when somebody new comes in the door, um, they're going to say, "How'd you find out? How'd you find out? How'd you hear about us?" Right? Yeah. And you know, they're going to see an uptick in the amount of people going, "We found you on Google." You know, I mean, that's that's the that's the key indicator right there, right? Sure, sure. I mean. You know, a, a lot of shops, I guess, I guess, you know, a lot of shops, you know, are kind of under the impression you know, they have their customer base. You know, it's uh, it might be even, uh, you know, I, I serviced uh, uh, 
uh, you know, Joe or Jane's uh, parents' vehicles, non-servicing their vehicles. It's a small town. Everybody knows who we are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, is, how wrong is that assumption? I don't know that it's necessarily wrong. Uh, I guess what I would say to that person is, um, you know, what what could it hurt, right? What could it hurt? How could it hurt you to get a presence out on this thing known as the internet, on this place known as Google, <laughs> that you know, sure. that we're all using, that it's in our pockets. You know, <laughs> if I need something, I'm I'm gonna pull my phone out. You know, um, it used to be in the old days, if you wanted to try to drive, you know, new business in the door, you'd send a mailer out to everybody in a, in a mailing code, you know, everyone. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know, for sure. <laughs> the reality is, if I need a shop to service my vehicle at this point, I don't go stand in front of my mailbox and pray that some random shop's going to send me a postcard. That's right. just not how it works. I reach in my pocket. <laughs> right? yeah. So yeah, I, I, I get that thought, you know, we're small, everyone knows us, we're small town. I just don't know how it could hurt. And I think sort of future proofing yourself is never a bad thing. Right, right. And, and, you know, uh, you know, I think as people are uh, uh, doing more road trips to travel too, there's folks that, that are might be coming through your town from somewhere else, right? And they might have a problem. You know, and uh, as you say, they pull out their phone and, geez, I've got a funny noise, da, 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 auto service in, uh, you know, small town, uh, Alberta, what's here? Yeah. And and whatever comes up is, is you know, might be pulling in and saying, you know, I, I, I just, I, I could, you, know, you were the first one on my phone here and, and uh, you're on Main Street and uh, I got a funny noise and I'm on the trip with my family and, and uh, you know, what, what, <laughs> what do we do? How do you find us? Well, right here on my phone, right? So... Um, now, uh, one of the one of the things that that uh, you folks have been uh, doing is running a, a series of uh, uh, consultations uh, yeah. and, and 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 sessions. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what's what's been going on there. Uh, you know, we just want to help help shops uh, individually, help them drive profit right and drive revenue in the door and so you know anybody can go to uh, epicor.com forward slash epic results and sign up for a profit clinic they're totally free <laughs> and you know also uh you know we're going to be focusing on just ways that shops can individually help themselves uh but you know at epicor mechanic net um we have all these tools <laughs> sure. to help you automate it, right? So, you know, most shops don't have the time to be thinking about this, right? And they have the best intentions in the world. It's like, okay, I need to do, you know, I need to do something simple. Like, you know, if somebody spends a thousand bucks, I want to send them a thank you note, you know, which is great. But when the phone's ringing or I got three people online trying to, trying to give me their keys, um, that's, that's the first thing that ends up on the back burner, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. And, you know, if you want something that's just going to just take care of this stuff for you, um, that's, that's Epicor Mechanic Net. Cool. Yeah. I mean, as, as, as we've been talking about, I mean, the tools are there. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Mechanic Net is, is obviously a, a well-accepted uh, platform. Uh, with a lot of tools or, or others uh, out there as well, often underutilized uh, because they take a, a little bit of uh, time away. And, and some, you know, some systems are harder to kind of get things done than others. Uh, but it does, it does, especially now where, uh, you know, the onus is really on the shops to, to ensure that, that people they don't get to see uh, know what they do. That that when you have cars, vehicles in for service, that you're you're reaching out and communicating with them, and certainly post service to ensure what what's going on, uh, pre service uh, to advise uh, procedures through through emails, other things that can really help build confidence of the customer base in your business, right? Yeah. 
You know, that's 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 the key these days is to, you know, what in, in the absence of the ability to meet face to face with your customers to ensure that that, uh, you know, you can continue to provide uh, communication that shows your value, what you do uh, can absolutely uh, drive business, drive, uh, drive uh, profit to the bottom line uh, with the business that you are getting. And, uh, uh, you know, there are, are uh, good tools out there to use if you use them. Uh, the uh, Epic Results Program uh, is something that uh, shops may want to take advantage of. Uh, uh, learn something to think about it for a little while, just to kind of raise uh, their awareness about uh, what uh, the impact of some of the tools out there are. Um, Robert, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, this is uh, the Great uh, Canadian Aftermarket Podcast. I hope to join you next time. Everybody be safe, be strong. We will see you soon. You're listening to the Great Canadian Aftermarket Podcast, brought to you by the publishers of Indie Garage and Jobber Nation. Connect with us online at indiegarage.ca and jobbernation.ca, a brand of chat-integrated media.